<laughs> Great. So uh, good evening, everybody. Welcome to the February 23rd um, meeting of the Cultural Council, Amherst Cultural Council. Um, this is a pursuant to chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021. This meeting is being conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting um, may do so via Zoom. And then these recordings are posted on the town's YouTube channel. Uh, no in-person attendance is permitted for members or for the public. Um, but every effort is made to ensure the public can adequately access the proceedings via technology. Um, and yeah, so the meeting will be posted on the town's YouTube um, channel shortly after the meeting's over. And, uh, and that's it. So then we just have to go around and check um, that everybody's got good audio. So I'll just kind of go off the screen. Um, Cindy? Yep. Leah? Yes. Joy? Here. Julianne? Yep. Arthur? Yep. And Cole? Yep. Great. Um, we sent out the minutes from Jenny uh, right after our last meeting. Um, does anybody want to have any discussion regarding the minutes or uh, make a motion to approve? I can motion to approve. Thank you. I'd second I'll second that. that. All right. I'm going to go ahead and take notes while we wait for Jenny just so that um, we don't lose those. I'm sorry, was that Joy that made the motion? And um, I heard Arthur second. I think Cole may have as well. Um, okay, so then we'll just, uh, Leah, do you support it? I support. Um, Julie, do you support? Or, yes. And Cole. Yes. I'm a yes as well. So we are unanimous. The minutes pass. Thank goodness. Um, we have this, we have a request from Ezel uh, Flora Nina, Nina to um, turn his grant activities uh, from last. So last year he had a reimbursement grant. They have not been able to conduct, they were not able to conduct their um, activities. And he had a request to, um, turn it into working, um, what am I, I'm sorry, um, operating costs. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull up that email if you just give me a moment. And I did forward it out to folks. So he wrote this to us on February 9th. And I had told him that, you know, many people have been converting their reimbursement grants into, um, uh, operating costs as opposed to project based, you know, with the COVID exceptions. Um, and so his, I get, so his, his accounting is, um, I, I just said, you know, does your organization, so he runs ETA and the Rainbow Players. Um, and I asked him if his organization incurred any costs. Um, and he lists out the following um, their Zoom account, you know, is 14 bucks a month, um, space rental. So they rent, they rent space at $650 a month. Um, they gave their classes away for free during the pandemic, which I think is kind of classic. Uh, we provided arts materials. Um, so, I mean, I mean, I think it's a pretty clear case where they incurred operating costs and didn't have their usual revenue. Um, so I don't know, I, I would open for further discussion, but I think this is a, a good example of where Particularly in the in the pandemic years, we can um, help help folks out with with the funds. Oh, I'd like to make a motion to go ahead and support the operating expenses. Okay. Anybody second? Yeah, I'll second that. Okay. Um, so we'll go around and vote. Uh, Arthur? Yep. Joy? Yeah. Leah, do you support? I support. And I also support it. So it, it passes. 
Uh, I've got, so Cole, our squares cannot be next to each other on the screen right now because the amount of blue that is happening right there is, is just intense. That's really wild. Um, I just saw Robin join and then she got bump, bumped out, it looks like. So I'm actually gonna hold on this next item because I know it's near and dear to her heart and, um, and we wanna have some very preliminary conversation about it. So I, we'll wait until she's online. There she is. Hey, Robin. Hey. Yeah. Perfect timing, actually. We just got to the um, preliminary accessibility roundtable discussion. Okay. Uh, and I, would, I guess, so, so very quick background for Joy and anybody who, I guess it was just Joy, who, who didn't hear last year's um, discussion on this, but we had the accessibility subcommittee last year that did a lot of, um, you know, we, we literally case managed grantees who wanted to get sign language interpreting or, or um, other kind of closed captioning, other kinds of supports for accessibility of their projects. Um, and one of the things that we asked them about last year was, would you be interested in having some kind of a convening where, where we come together and we talk about best practices around accessibility? Um, and then as the year went on, I think we all sort of started talking more about you know, accessibility in terms of um, revenue. So that's a big part of the direct granting that we've done and you know, being very broad with that term accessibility and, and you know, certainly starting with disability accessibility, but, but being more expansive than that. So um, I sent out that same survey to this year's grantees as, as well. So I do have a list of probably off the top of my head, 30 or 40 people who have said that they're interested in some kind of an accessibility convening event. We left it very, very undefined at the time. Um, and I did just touch base briefly with um, Charles at the MCC, uh, who, who has been our guru when it comes to accessibility. And, you know, he, he said that depending on what we wind up wanting to do, he'd be willing to help, you know, come in as a consultant, a speaker, or potentially help us connect with other speakers. So I think once we start to narrow down, like, what our vision is for this event, um, and, you know, certainly a date, I think would be helpful, whether we want to do it in person or hybrid or more mixed. Um, once we start to narrow down a little bit more of, of our vision, uh, I think he'd be a really important partner to sort of bring into the conversation. But um, that, so that's it right now. It's very, very loose. We do have about 15, well, actually over the two years, about $3,000 that we could use, up to 3,000 roughly that we could use on this. Um, so, so, you know, it's not a ton of money, but certainly we can, you know, pay some, some honoraria to folks who are going to participate if that's the direction we, we wind up going with it. Um, and that's, that's really kind of all it is right now. So I, I guess I would just sort of start out by saying, you know, um, brought any, any broad thoughts or reactions that folks have had about this, about this idea. And then go from there as well. Robin. I mean, it, I like it. I think it's great and we should do it by the specifics. Um, I haven't yet really thought about it. Um, probably not until next month <laughs> when we're through this. But I mean, I, I think it's pretty open what we can do. Can I, can I step in for you, Robin? Robin, yeah. it's been incredibly busy. So one of the, the shifts that we have you know, in the past, we've always kind of had the grant cycle and there's the push to do the deliberations and then the push to get to the final point where we can vote and have a final amount. And then there's the push to get the rejection letters out so we can process those so that we can get the approvals out. Um, so where the treasurer in prior years would kind of have these rolling submissions, which is maybe not really a, efficient, um, Robin's been incredibly busy because we've been prompting people to get the contracts back to us within a two week window and there've been stragglers. So um, just to give everybody a little bit of context, Robin's really been, been uh, taking it for the team here and, and shepherding these contracts through and it's a lot of details. Um, so while the rest of us have been able to take a deep breath, she's still off to the races. Thank you, Robin. Oh. Oh, thanks, Julie. So, yeah, you know, just coming to an end, hopefully. But I mean, I think we can do any number of things. So 
I'm not quite sure how we're going to figure that out, what we want to do, but um, overall, I think it's a great idea, but no idea. I was also, um, this isn't a super specific, but I know in the past we've had conversations about like accessibility with the website and with the rest of the town. So if we could really like get the word out to like other councils and like town employees that could also be like a way to spread like if we're hosting this but we kind of like we could write to like like I don't know who the person would be but like maybe like Paul Bockelman and be like hey like spread the word about this and then like that could kind of start like if we do more general accessibility as well as like in the arts it might have a greater impact than if it was like specifically focused on like art accessibility, but also like, I don't know. Robin? I, um, I have been sort of taking note of things like um, at the Super Bowl, which I don't watch, but um, there were deaf performers with the music. And um, there's this whole organization for deaf performers. And, um, I've also seen there's a bunch of people at UMass Amherst who are producing TikToks on trying to get into buildings in a wheelchair or whatever other accessibility issues they might have. And it's really bad actually. <laughs> I mean, one woman is in the dorm that she needs to be and she can't get across and into the building where she would eat for many reasons. And I've seen like, I think three people doing this. Um, and it seems to be this whole project that they're doing. And it might or might not be coordinated between them, I'm not sure. But, you know, that might be an interesting way to go or at least to contact them or look at what they're doing or I mean just one idea. Um, Does someone like that have kind of a number of followers or something? My guess is yes. Because if, if they that's kind of the conjunction is if they're doing that which is great you know um, and they have followers and we can reach out to them and say hey I'm sure they they're already trying to spread the word so if they have people that are listening. Yes and you just think, I think so not where I saved it, but it sort of just comes up. But I did save the website somewhere. Um, so you know, and I'm sure there's a lot of things like that. But also the the Deaf Performance Association, which I think is in either Detroit or Philly, I'm not sure where. You know, is this national organization, um, and you know intersects directly with us because it's for performing in the arts. Um, and I'm sure there's a lot of things like that. So we might want to do that. We might want to just do an educational. We might want to hook in with other cultural councils and do, I'm not quite sure what. I mean, there's all sorts of things. I, I think working with um, Charles Baldwin uh, would be, you know, really productive. Um, but the specifics, I have, I have no idea. But that's what you do. You talk about it and figure it out. So I, I do think um, I do think the first step for us is, you know, if we assume we have people who want to come engage, well, we don't have to assume. We know we have people who want to come engage. Um, but I think it would be smart for us to start thinking about, you know, date ranges and types of formats that we want to have. And then, you know, because then you can start the conversation with um, potential speakers, potential activity, you know, we can sort of start to hone in that way. But um, I would I would say that if we if we want to start thinking about about when, um, when and, and sort of how. Um, that might be a good place to start. And it's a hard one. Um, 
maybe would it be better like I feel like the summer is sometimes hard to like coordinate because people will be gone do we want to do like late spring or fall and also if we're thinking of doing like a pecha kucha we should like do like maybe one in the spring and one in the fall because it might just be like a lot if we're trying to organize both at once I think it's a good point about um, pecha kucha It's already the end of February, so I feel like um, I feel like fall is probably a safer bet for us. Although the downside to that, of course, is that our current grantees, you know, if we do it in the fall, this this year's grantees really really won't be able to um, engage before their like their projects will be over by the time they engage. Um, so that's the that's the downside, I think. Um, but I think realistically, it's probably more realistic to look at late summer, early fall than it is. Um, the spring. I don't know. I mean, if, if other folks wanted to move towards the spring, I would be willing to um, help make that happen. I think it's too early, given we don't really know what we want to do. And we're still in COVID still. So. I guess I'm still a little bit unclear as to what we're actually trying to do. Yeah, so we put aside funds um, out of our local grant fund uh, to support accessibility projects. So um, <coughs> last year, we, we literally used a chunk of money to pay for interpreting and um, you know various accessibility things. We also asked all of our uh, grantees, the question is, would you be interested in participating in an accessibility forum? And that's that's as specific as we got it, um, was just to have some roundtable conversations. Um, we've put some, some money aside this year so we could potentially bring in um, speakers or facilitators to sort of help. Um, I mean, I think I think the idea is, you know, to take an artist uh, or or, you know, a grantee and, and help them look at their own project and just sort of um, see what's possible in terms of making it more accessible to a broader uh, audience. Seems like we'd want to tee that up so that that content is out there before the next round of grants to refer people to it is the kind of logistical thing, right? I mean, if it's just, a, if all we've said is a, just like a round table discussion would it be possible to just pick a date and have our grantees on Zoom, whoever can make it, and then us, and then we can try to figure out maybe uh, some kind of expert just to have a Zoom meeting sometime maybe end of April, something like that. Because doing a giant Zoom, first of all, you know, takes the COVID piece a little bit away. Um, and we could get a sign language interpreter, we could get captions. And it's not like we don't have to find a venue and, you know, arrange some grand thing. It's just, here's a link and as many people as we can get onto it to have some kind of field of discussion. I mean, since this is such a new thing and, you know, this is the first time we're ever doing it we could even just lead the discussion to generate ideas on, hey, let's look at your project. What are we doing? You know what I mean? It could just be a round table between even just the grantees and us sitting in there, just promoting the discussion. And then from there, what we might be able to get ideas for what would make it um, more formal or, you know, for the next grantee period. Or which experts to bring in as opposed to, you know, it'd be nice if we could secure an expert. And I agree, I don't think it has to be super complicated to have a conversation, but that conversation might say, well, what people really need help with is this kind of expert. So I don't know, Cole or Arthur, if, if you all have thoughts, but I, I personally like the idea of, of putting something on the map 
you know, putting a date on the map um, and, and seeing who comes. And then it's a chance to gather ideas for content, format, um, a lot of those pieces. I think Char Charles Baldwin would also be very comfortable in a kind of a free flowing type thing like that. Um, he's, you know, he's sort of our accessibility liaison. So, so I'm sure we could run it, but I think, you know, he, he would also enjoy uh, participating in something like that too. I agree that that'd be enough of an expert just to get the ball rolling right. and formal enough. Especially because I feel like we do need like some kind of a person to like, because there's like a lot of questions where like, if someone was asking things like, I definitely like don't know enough about accessibility. And I feel like there's a really big benefit to having people who are affected by this kind of be like the leaders and be like, okay, like, here's what we want. Here's what we need. And then kind of to like, have us kind of like backing them up. I feel like that makes more sense to me than like me kind of like not really knowing what's the most needed or, or like leading that discussion. Yeah, and the other thing is he's very much a facilitator. You know, he's not gonna just take up all the oxygen in the room. I think he would be a good partner in, in sort of helping us prompt dialogue with our um, grantees. Definitely having him here. And then also like, I liked the idea of kind of gauging with public, like what aspects might be the most wanted to talk about and then kind of like outsourcing people from there. And I also liked Robin's idea of like the local like UMass TikTokers. Cause I feel like TikTok can actually be like this cool platform to like raise awareness. And I think reaching out to those people might be interesting. So, can we start talking about, you know, potentially setting like, I, I could reach back out to Charles and say, you know, these are the two April dates we thought and, and times that we thought might work. Um, I don't have a calendar right in front of me, but I will in a second. Well, tax day is the 18th, so we should probably avoid that. <laughs> it's the 18th this year? Yeah. Yeah, because it's Passover and Good Friday on the 15th. Oh, yeah. Yep, same weekend. So, also, so though, we could definitely Drake, go after the 18th. <laughs> yeah. And the Drake is going to have its opening and hasn't figured out when yet. And originally, we had talked in April. I'm actually meeting with Gabriel, um, uh, Gabriel Boog next week to talk about the opening um, and what they'll need because they are going to want some volunteer help, but they haven't figured out that date. And I, I hopefully we won't overlap that date. It may be in May though, but I mean, the sign is, not, is going up and- Well, the Drake has this, this, are you saying the celebration of the arts has moved? Yeah. Okay. Um, it didn't have a specific date. I thought um, it did in our, our, it's not a big deal, but I thought it did when we approved it. No. It's okay. It was hopefully April, and we also were trying to have it when the students were still here, but avoid Passover and Easter, which is what reminded me of it. So, and the latest thing I saw may have been on Facebook or may have just been online um, that they're working on figuring out the date. So, um, just although I'm sure it won't be like it, my guess is it's Tuesday, it, it's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. So if we did this like on a Tuesday, I don't think we'd overlap. Okay, I am looking. They they did have a date of April twenty third, whether they have it or not now. Oh, in they, our in our thing. Okay. In the, yeah, in the actual application, it was dated April twenty third. That makes sense. So sure we could date, just but... skip the twenty third as a possible date right now. Even if they're not using it, we could just not do that just in case they are. That is a Saturday. I mean, I think we're more likely to do something midweek anyway. What about the week of the 25th, Monday the 25th? And it's basically the end of April. Why not? Yeah, what, um, when we imagine something like this happening, do we imagine it at, at 6 p.m. sort of you know, dinner-ish time or? 
Julie says yes. I mean, we could also offer it's I, I guess it's either that or or um weekend pretty much. I think we do it at at six, you know, on a weeknight. I think that sounds good. It might be more accessible um, in a different way of accessibility to do it midway through a day on a weekend, thinking about families with young children or people who work at that time at night. Yeah, it's easy, it's easier to say I'm going to do something at six than yeah, weekends are pretty unpredictable for everybody. Well, wait, Cole, can you clarify? Your yeah, no, I was saying I was saying a weekend would would probably be better for oh. uh, a bunch of people. I, I mean, oh, I'm thinking about students or families with young children or even older children for that matter. Um, and people who, who have to work multiple jobs and might be working night on a Tuesday. Yeah, but they are sh on weekends, believe me, they are driving their kids everywhere and getting the chores done and fixing whatever needs to be fixed at the house. And I'd say from a family point of view, probably yeah. weekends are the hardest at least that's been my experience it's just hard to find a time that works for people well i'll say this if you know if we are going to have a quorum there it'll be a public meeting which is fine um but i would say you know six o'clock works for most of us on weeknights so i think we kind of just plan it for for when we can have the most of our members and um you know, and then if we get a lot of feedback from folks that say I would have liked to have come, but that was a bad time for us, for me, then we can talk about doing it, you know, doing a second session or something like that. So yes. without, let me see, I'm going to pull my, but so I just I'll toss for some out. Yeah, go ahead. Robin. Just for some clarification, this is sort of a meeting to start brainstorming and seeing what people need and want and are interested in, in terms of our grantees, not in terms of um, how we try to bring in other grantees who might need different, um, might have different accessibility issues and um, in terms of either applying or in producing. Um, and, and not it can just issues. be really general and just that it could be whatever the community brings. We're here to serve the community. We're holding this, whether it's specific to grants or whether it's specific to the, you know, to, to the events or the actual application process, like anything could come up. We don't know, but at least we're starting a dialogue. To explore. Yeah, it's all good. The last thing I wanted to do, I didn't mean it that way. Um, I just didn't want to keep putting it, like kicking a can down the road because accessibility needs are now. And frankly, with Zoom, we have the capability of trying to get as many people in the room as possible without having to necessarily worry about transportation and trying to get into a building and things like that. So um, I think the sooner we can start having conversations with the community, with the grantees, with whoever is, who wants to show up because those are going to be the people affected. Um, I think, you know, it would be best that might be more productive than us, like trying to find the perfect event and try to do something like in fall, you know. Um, but that said, I do have to go. So thank <laughs> I'm you. I'm so glad you were here to say oh, that. Oh, I think it really helped, Joy. You. Okay, you get, can you hold on for one sec? So there's one, two, three, four. So when Joy leaves, we will no longer have a quorum. So, vote. Vote. so Julie, if you got to for one second, I'm sorry. So if we if we can tentatively say that week of April 26th, I just want to make sure we don't have any other business because when Joy leaves, we have to. Can I make a motion that we vote to to tentatively schedule for the week of April the 25th at 6 p.m. one of the days? Yeah, I think that's great, and we can I'm find motioning. Charles, which works for him. Okay. Yeah. Does anyone second? Second. Thank you. All right, so you're out. Arthur? Yes. Okay. Is it yes? Oh. Yes. Okay, so now we can no longer talk. It's been nice knowing you folks. <laughs> well, we can talk. Well, the meeting is, we, we're no longer having a meeting. <laughs> Matt, you're going to contact Charles, though, right? Can you say that? Or you want me to? 
Nope, I, I, uh, I will. Okay, good. Um, can I, wait, are we, I forget the rules of not having a quorum, but I was gonna yeah. quickly say, um, we definitely need to focus on like advertising and getting it out there because like when we had our last open meeting, like not a lot of people showed up, which is like, I feel like that's like kind of expected for like an arts council, but like definitely like kicking that up a notch for this and reaching out to like, I don't know, like if we, I think if we all work together, like reaching out to different circles. So I'm gonna, I, and I'll, I'll look to Cindy to kind of guide me on this, but I'm gonna officially adjourn the meeting okay. of the cultural council. I, I think we can continue to have an inform. I don't know if we can continue an informal conversation. We can't wanna, vote. We can't vote on speak. anything, or can we not talk, Cindy? I am not one hundred percent sure. I think there's not supposed to be any more discussions um, when there's no quorum. Um, but I, I don't, I don't know for sure. I'm sorry. Why, why don't we? I do think it might be. Propose, I'm going to propose that we adjourn the meeting and 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 kind of end the recording, and then you know the the public meeting will be over. Um, and, you know, we won't have any more substantive discussion at that point. Can we get the, just the grant update as well as what was the other piece on your, uh, whatever was going to be presented on, uh, the AR, what is it, what's the agenda, the ARPA update or no? Well, I'm just, I, I, I don't want to, um, you know, with the recording running, I would want to adjourn the public meeting just because. I think we just plain can't meet. Like we can't all, you know, five of us, Leah and Cindy aside, go get together for a beer and talk council politics. So if we right. can't do that, then we can't stay on the call and do it without the recording either. Am I wrong? And there'd be more on the up and up to have the update and have the recording going that something was said and there's a record of it. Well, okay, well, why don't we do this then? Why don't we just, uh, and I'll put this in the minutes too, that, you know, Joy left at 635, the official meeting um, adjourned, and then, you know, so we no longer had a quorum, and then I can just speak to those two things really quick. Yeah. But we'll just make sure the record reflects, you know, Thank you. Uh, that ending a quorum. Um, so grants update, I think the, the grants update is, um, as Julie said earlier, you know, that Robin is processing everything as quickly as she can, um, as they come in paper, you know, we're making sure asking people to submit paper versions. So as, as these come in, um, we're tracking them. And the goal of course, is to have all 64 in hand for when the town has their funds so that we can give the town a very straightforward list of 64 grantees and their amounts and those checks get cut. Um, we're pretty close we're, based on the signatures that were done today where there's, there's some stragglers, but the bulk of them literally majority are in. Are you signing, you're signing 22 grant agreements, 2022 grant agreements? Yeah. Yeah. Just like I've done the reimbursement forms with Robin in the past. It just has to have my signature or your signature, so. Well, not actually any member's signature. Yeah, well, there you go. So, and we're, they're all getting reconciled back against the amount that was awarded and double checked and everything else, so. But largely the hard copies are in and largely they have signatures on them from us, largely. There are a few stragglers. And they're all on the shared Excel sheet that Robin yes. has. I updated. <laughs> right. So yeah, it's all up to date. Yeah. Um, and as more come in, I will update it. So we're in good shape. There is the good news. Right. That is good, and we have to be Mind caught yet. by using using Google Docs for for this work. I mean, I don't. I, and um, so we don't want to tie both of Robin's hands and her feet behind her back. So we've just. <laughs> just trying to keep track of what, what's signed off on, that's all, and who we still need to correspond with. But you're copied on all that, Matt, so you're good. Well, I, I know, I, I and I, I'm not trying to be a stickler, it's just, 
and I did create that Google Doc and, and set it all up um, for tracking. But the official the official position is that we can't be doing right, Cindy. We had an attorney general thing come out to us on open meeting law, so we definitely don't want to be using Google Docs outside of open meetings um, to do official business. So, you know, if it's if it's one individual's record keeping, you know, and it happens to be shared, but but we just want to be cautious about that. Um, okay, I'm, uh, could you, I'm not sure what, I was keeping track of them. You set up Google Docs so that, you know, you and I thought all of us could keep track of it in, you know, that way. So I've updated it when it comes in because, or the time when, you know, we went over it and you updated it, but um, I don't actually need that. I have, you know, frankly, a much easier system, but that's not a difficult system either. So I'm not sure if you're saying I should be updating it or I shouldn't be updating it. Um, it started with just making sure that all the letters went out. So listen, I, I don't think we need to devote a whole bunch of the meeting time. If this is something that the three of us need to clean up, then, then we'll clean it up. Because the simple report is that most of the grants, the hard copies are in and we're in okay. good shape with the grantees doing their due diligence. Cindy, if you have any thoughts or want to follow up with us and keep us in line as well, that'd be great. But I, I think we've covered the the sentiment of it for this evening, that most of the paperwork is in and done. Everybody's doing a good job. Um, Tough being in a modern world with all of this stuff, you know, everybody's going to lose their minds. Yeah. So anything yeah, more on so, that? Well, the the challenge for us is to try to get to 100 percent of people filling out their thing and that's that's why you know i've been asking um robin you know is, is is because really i mean i keep on reaching back out to these people and they're like ignoring the emails or or not but we're, we're getting very close and it's definitely something to look at for next year um you know this upfront work for us is it's a it's a lot to try to get them to fill out their paperwork and what we don't want to do is stragglers to create, you know, an inconvenience on the town. So, um, on the other hand, if they're not doing the due diligence to get their paperwork filed out, it kind of indicates that maybe they're not going to follow through on the project. So, I don't want to push and prod people too much. Like, if we've sent them one, two, God forbid, three messages three. and they're still not doing it, then I don't really have much confidence that they're going to do it anyway. So, let it fall through the cracks. Yeah, I agree. If it, it, you know, God forbid it could always come back to us having to address it and vote it. But again, the bulk of these are done. We don't really have a whole lot to worry about. Um, I mean, if you want to name names, Amherst Cinemas wasn't in. I'm sure they mean to get theirs in, you know, so yeah. it, we'll, we'll get through it. It's a new, new process. So sometimes some of the people who did it before aren't in sync with it, but we're in good shape. Okay, um, so I think the only other thing that I had put on my on the agenda, um, unless folks have other comments, um, was just to give an update on the town ARPA money that had come out. Um, you know, and this was all part of the recovery platform. I'm not sure if anybody went in and submitted public comment for that. I, I shared the links at the time. Um, essentially, in terms of in terms of funding that they put aside in ARPA for um, cultural activities, um, they have uh, put in uh, 100,000 for a small business grant program. A lot of which will be sort of cultural, um, culturally oriented. Uh, I think the town is going to directly manage the distribution of those funds. Um, there is still a chance that they have a, a second round of funding coming to them from the state. So there may be a chance that they ask us to help um, in our next grant cycle to distribute some of these funds. So that's something that, you know, we'll just stay in touch with them about. Um, they put in 300,000 for downtown business development, which is uh, largely going to the Drake, going pretty much directly to the Drake, I think. Um, and then over, and, and the, these funds are over uh, two to three years, depending on, I think, on the activity. Um, 
and then finally, they put aside uh, 250,000 for an economic empowerment position um, that has uh, a role trying to help coordinate arts and culture, um, BIPOC equity efforts, and relationships with the colleges. Um, and it's kind of a it's it's kind of a amalgam of, of a bunch of different duties and responsibilities. Um, that was that was initially slotted out to be a position where they would hire somebody for it. But um, the last that I heard, they were going to bid it out and, and it'll be more of a, um, I guess, fee for service for lack of a better word. Um, and we'll see, what's that? Consulting, a consultant. Hopefully more than, more than consulting, <laughs> hopefully somebody who's actually, you know, doing some, some um, boots on the ground work, hopefully somebody local who's doing some direct work. Um, but I'm not entirely sure uh, when that's going to go up, or you know who they have in mind necessarily. But you know, I think there are some players in town who who would be natural fits for it. You know, so um, that'll be just that'll be interesting. We'll we'll track it. I did I did share with them, um, you know, based on our roundtables. You know, I, I wrote up all the comments from those roundtables um, that we convened, and you know, and and shared that there was a lot of interest in having somebody who was a you know, cultural director a la Northampton, um, they kind of decided to fold that into this uh, along with other economic empowerment um, projects. And so, you know, it'll be interesting. I mean, we have, you know, we have multiple cultural institutions in town. Um, so it'll be interesting to see, you know, what comes of this role and, and if it is actually sort of a, um, a role to unify those those institutions or or kind of how it plays out. So I'm definitely hope, hopeful that it's going to be somebody local uh, who winds up getting it, who already has those connections and it's not sort of reinventing the wheel. Um, but that's it. That's it for now. Yeah, Julie. So it, it sounds like kind of looking at your recap that there's a two to three year timeline on this. There's a hundred thousand dollars allocated to various small businesses. Maybe the state has a second round of funding. The downtown development seems like that's all kind of figured out. They're going to figure out this $250,000 position or just energy labor, somebody at that. So as far as what would be meaningful to our grantees, that probably comes back to the first two. So a possible round of the second round of state funding doesn't exist yet. So it's not particularly actionable until it exists, right? So does did the town release anything about the small business grant stuff, are they still processing through to the point where they'll be making announcements as to who can apply for that and how that'll get distributed? Or do we not know? They have, it's, they have posted a lot of this stuff online. I'm not sure, I don't, I mean, I don't have anything actionable for you right, right now, if that's what you're asking, but um, they do have a recovery, Amherst recovery plan website. Um, Creating a resilient Amherst. Uh, it's great. If we've got something on social media, I'm more asking just to get the word out. So, at the point there's a word to get out, you know, we should be getting it out. I just don't know if there's anything to communicate to our community about that. No, no, I was just giving. I mean, there, I'm sure there are groups that need to access it, but we wouldn't know where, what to tell them, where to start, what to do, right? Sorry, one sec. So anyway, I'm not, yeah, I, I don't have anything for you to, for, for social media right now. I was just giving you the update on the ARPA funds. Yep. The, with the, sorry, go ahead. I just said, yep, thanks, just. Okay. So, all right, well, that, that's, that's it for me on that. Um, let's see, looking at our, uh, does anybody have any, well, we're, we're kind of past our adjournment point already. Um, so, so I will, uh, I think we'll move forward with, with, you know, the decisions we've made now and I'll get these notes over to Jenny to um, put into her template and, and we'll circulate it. Great, thanks for the updates. Sure. All right. Good night, everybody. Good night. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye. Good night. Good night. Good night, everybody.
Take care.